the piece is called Chroma, and um, there are two kind of dictionary definitions of that. There's one which basically means intensity of colour or freedom from white. Um, and I've kind of gone with that second prospect, freedom from white. What we try to do in the piece is create a volume of space with the architect John Paulson in which the dancers provide kind of like a gra graphic sketch, a relief from this sense of white. So that's where the name came from. It's going to count that last day. It's my last day, but what I want to see is that... This change. piece has been quite strange for me in that the, normally I start with ver a very heavy concept and then get the collaborators that I want to work on developing kind of the internal mechanisms of that concept and really exploring it and testing it and provoking it. But I started this uh, process with two very different kind of approaches. I, I'm a big fan of John Paulson's architecture and had always wondered how he'd been able to reduce elements to their kind of their, their purest form, to the essential if you like. And I thought spatially for a dance that would be really incredible if we could take away as much of the interference of a normal stage set and have something that's really, really pure. So I went to, and met John and he was thrilled to do his first stage design. And we just talked about how we might be able to um, provide or uh, really work with a space which extraordinarily gives the dancers a different sense of volume. Um, and that was at the same time as I'd heard a piece uh, of music by a composer called Joby Talbot called Hovercraft. <laughs> Wayne McGregor uh, initially came to me and um, he was interested in choreographing a piece of mine I'd written for the Kensington Symphony Orchestra called Hovercraft, um, which I did last year, 2005. Um, but his problem with it was that, much as he loved it, it was only five minutes long. So we had to find a solution to that little problem. And um, I think initially there was all kind of idea, all kind of ideas sort of sloshing around about what other music might be used. Um, but uh, I played Wayne some of, some of my other music, some of my chamber music um, that I'd written at about the same time. And also uh, some of the arrangements that were works in progress that I was doing of tracks by um, the White Stripes for this album, Aluminium, that's just come out. And um, he, really kind of, he really kind of fell in love with some of that music. The fantastic thing about the music is it's very uh, acerbic, visceral, physical, quite violent music. And I thought it would be a fantastic contrast between that and this really almost like Zen-like space that John's created. And so those two influences started the process early. So I already knew kind of what the temperature of the piece was going to be before I started in the studio. Um, and that's unusual because I say usually I start with nothing and start with creating the choreography from which design elements or musical elements emerge. Sort of odd because you, you write the music, and this is since I wrote the music, you know, like 12 months ago, um, and then you see it totally reimagined and reinterpreted by, um, by a choreographer and dancers, and that is, it's very odd and a, and a real kind of thrill, you know, because you, I have my own kind of musical ideas and I have my own sort of, I suppose, kind of emotional and, and, and psychological ideas about what the music is about in some kind of nebulous way. And uh, it's interesting to see that those ideas bear absolutely no relationship to somebody else's ideas who, who is equally getting something out of the music and enjoying it, but they're in a totally different way. And that's quite, um, quite interesting, quite sobering. <laughs> 